Rangers. Let's pivot to some of the stuff that came out yesterday from the teams that have made the decision and implemented the decision to move on from their current coaches. Josh Harris, the new, still new owner of the Washington Commanders, making his first major move on Monday, firing Ron Rivera and compiling. And see, this is they did a nice job of keeping this all under wraps. They have been doing a lot of work behind the scenes that nobody knew about. Nobody found out about it. Nobody sent any texts to Shefty in exchange for future consideration. We found out that they're compiling this team that is going to help them figure out who will run the football operations, who will be the head coach. Here's Josh Harris meeting with reporters yesterday to discuss the search for the successor to Ron Rivera and a new head of football operations in Washington. Uh, I'm going to be leading that search both for a head of football operations as well as a head coach. And uh, I'm going to be assisted by uh, my partners, Irvin uh, Magic Johnson, Mitch Rails, and David Blitzer, as well as uh, a couple very well-known uh, sports executives, Bob Myers, who I've known for many years and have a tremendous amount of respect for. And uh, Rick Spielman, who obviously is a uh, <clears throat> 30-year football executive, executive of the year, uh, obviously 10 years with the Vikings. Yeah, so we're looking for the uh, best uh, people to build an elite franchise that's going to uh, consistently compete and win championships. So that's kind of our goal. In terms of the structure, uh, obviously, I start with talent. You want the best talent. Uh, and sometimes, you know, you let the talent just, you know, just sort of influence the structure. But my orientation, obviously, is that um, <clears throat> being uh, a, the head of football operations, being, in essence, the, in that lead role, that's an 80-hour-a-week job. Uh, being a head coach, that's an 80-hour-a-week job. Um, I think there are two roles there. Um, and so I think it's harder. I mean, it, there are certainly individuals that control everything. Uh, I think it's increasingly hard, so my orientation is not to do that. But on the other hand, uh, I'm going to let, you know, I'm going to really be somewhat flexible around talent. He said a lot there. Somewhat flexible around talent yeah. could be the signal that if I decide I want Bill Belichick to be my head coach and I have to give him the keys, even though there'll be someone who is called the head of football operations, Bill Belichick will still be in charge. If that's what it takes, that's what it takes. And, you know, Shereen, I'm curious to know, and the misadventures of the Panthers this year, I think, provides a very clear example as to how this happens. Josh Harris is in charge. Is he setting up this network, this table of people who will be advising him to truly objectively advise him? Or is this all just a way to make it look like what he wants to do anyway is the right thing to do. Because without Bob yeah. Myers and Rick Spielman and this person and that person to show that it's the right decision based on their own unique experiences, it just looks like a meddling owner who's coming in saying, this is what I want to do. And, you know, he rattled off three names of his partners. Like, for a lot of these teams, when you have limited partners – they are extremely limited. Art Rooney won't listen to a damn thing any of his limited partners say if they try to tell him what he should do. He runs that show. And with Josh Harris, like, you know, Irvin Magic Johnson is a very vocal presence, even though he owns a very small percent of the team. So you talked earlier, Shereen, about how attractive a place is. I don't know it's real attractive to me as a coach if I got to go to a place where I'm answering to this person, this person, that person, then I got this person over here, then I got this person over here, that makes it harder, not easier for me to do it. It's more people I got to worry about. Who's on my side? Who's behind me? Who's working against me? We all need to be on the same page. We all need to be rowing the same boat. And the fewer people there are above the coach – the easier it is for the coach to do what he's trying to do. So I think that all this, whether Josh Harris realizes it or not, and he probably doesn't, to me makes it less attractive, not more attractive. 
Well, and that's certainly a question to ask in the interview process, Mike, is who am I answering to and, and how many layers are there here? You know, am I, am I going to be hearing from all these people through, throughout my tenure here? So, yeah, the, all those are questions to, to be asked. But you're right. You don't want to have that many people involved if you're a head coach. Josh Harris, I was interested because he owns two other teams. Mike, he owns the Philadelphia 76ers. He owns the New Jersey Devils. He's done this a lot, which tells me he's not really that good at it. He's hired four GMs and three (laughs) coaches with the 76ers and three full-time coaches with the Devils. So he's done it over and over and over again. Maybe he finally gets it right with the commanders. Maybe that's why he's asking for help, because he hasn't gotten right with his other teams. But he hasn't built consistent winners with those other teams. So... I don't know how this is going to work out. He's certainly thinking outside the box of what NFL teams do. The Browns tried this with the chief strategy officer and all that and hasn't worked out that great for them. But if if it does, I think other teams probably look at this model. If it doesn't, they say, yeah, new guy coming in. And, we, you know, other owners like when when an owner – does it consistently put a good team on the field? They really like they like Dan Snyder in there because they could, knew they'd always beat Washington. So if this doesn't work out for Josh Harris, the other owners will be perfectly fine with this. Hey, we mentioned David Tepper. One of the main regrets for other owners at this point is that they regret they're not in the same division as Tepper's Carolina Panthers <laughs> because that's a team at this point. You just assume you're going to get two wins a year and they're going to continue to spin their wheels in the mud. So this is all, like you said, something's going to have to be figured out by the coach through the interview process. And it also comes down to the specific language of the contract. What are my powers? Who do I answer to? Who can I tell, sit down and shut up? What are you doing here? Why are you in my locker room? Why are you on my sideline? And still, even beyond the four corners of the contract, there's a broader cultural reality that you have to deal with it doesn't matter what your contract says when you show up for work and these people are hanging around and you know they're tight with the boss and the boss is the one who ultimately decides whether or not you're going to stay yeah you'll get a buyout but you still can't work there so I just think that there are warning signs and I know commanders fans right now are just happy to not have Dan Snyder yeah but as I said at the time this deal was done there's no guarantee you're going to have a better team you just have a different owner who doesn't embarrass you that's what you have So Josh Harris could be David Tepper with a more pleasing personality and he doesn't throw a drink on someone that may be, you know, at the end of the day, we don't know, (laughs) but, but I believe because I trust my source completely and entirely on this. Josh Harris is enamored with the idea of Bill Belichick being the coach of the commanders, whether or not that works is a different issue. Will he want more power than they're willing to give him? I don't know. But we'll see how it all plays out. They do need to upgrade from a talent standpoint. Their stadium continues to be crap. And that is where you're going to be working eight or nine days out of the year in games that count for the foreseeable future. There are some things that make it attractive. There are things that make it concerning. And I just think there may be too many chefs right now with a spoon in the stew. And I don't know how much of that is just cover for Josh Harris ultimately doing what he wants to do. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.